Business Female Business Angel Podcast. Your go-to destination if you're a business angel or would like to get into angel investing and don't know where to start. Or if you just want to find out how we tick. We're Tina and Katja, both business angels from Berlin. Well, I'm a VC now. We will interview established female business angels about how they got started and how it is going, including all the best tips and tricks. So get ready for some insider stories and personal empowering moments and revelations with these incredible women. Welcome to this journey with us. Hi, Tina. Hi, Katja. So nice to talk to you. Thanks. Hi. Hi, and thanks for being here with us. It's super cool to be interviewed. Well, let's see who's interviewing whom on the show. <laughs> but I agree, it's great to do a joint episode. I suggest we talk a little bit about how it all started. How did Female Business Angel podcast begin? I will talk about my podcast, but the stage is yours now. How did we start? I think it started last summer. A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Table. Oh, right. Yeah, probably eating tapas and drinking wine. That's how all and, the best stories uh, begin over food. <laughs> Were you already working on the pitch deck for your fund? We are yeah. fundraising. Setting up yeah. your own fund. I was in the process of finally quitting my job at Spotify, which was like a big scary step. And we've been discussing angel investing so far and the resources that were available to learn about it. And we realized, okay, there there is nothing for female business angels. Is the podcast, well, the right up of podcasts, but they are more US focused or not necessarily for female business angels. So we could not find that resource. There were no books because it's literally happening now. It's not in the books yet. You cannot really Google it. So we decided it would be really nice to have something like that. And why not to, to create it? ourselves. Yeah. And I think if we kind of wind back, it was very different because I didn't have the fund yet. I was still mainly an angel investor and you were just starting doing your angel investments and you hadn't gone spotty angels. So we started in a very different time for us. And so much has happened, not just in our lives. I'm raising fund two now. You've done oh. a really good run with your spotty angel investments and set up a company. Been a founder for 10 months, <laughs> um, ideating for the next company now. Yeah. So for both of us, since the beginning, it's been a really cool journey. And it's nice to look back on it, particularly this very last year since we started podcasting. It's um, so much has changed also in the industry. It's been a really lively year and on a personal and industry level. <laughs> it definitely hasn't been boring. Let's put it that way. And I remember one and a half, two years ago, I was literally craving all the resources related to angel investing. I remember I was into Christoph Redke's podcast, mm. uh, Angels of Deutschland or something like that. But then I thought, hey, but I'm European and I'm in touch with people from almost all European countries and we are one tech scene and one continent. So I would really love to have a resource, like a platform, a community, something where you could learn from for Europe and especially with the female lens. In terms of the European scale versus German scale. So Venturing Women is the second podcast. My first podcast was in German. And beyond the fact that... It, no, I had no yeah, idea. Beyond the fact that it was torturous to produce it, if you're not a native speaker, it's so much easier to make a tons of mistake in German compared to English. <laughs> um, alone, the articles in uh, Der, Die, Das, uh, is it uh, masculine or feminine? <laughs> nightmare. That's very brave. It was a kamikaze decision. I would have never done it now. <laughs> if you ask me, would you like to produce a podcast mm -hmm. in German? Most probably the answer will be no. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's good to step out of your comfort zone, but it's also good to be aware of your own limitations and maybe leverage your strengths, right? Yeah, exactly. It's all about leveraging yeah. your strength, but also it's about exposure. Back then, the podcasting landscape was non-existent in Germany. And on the one hand, it gives you the advantage of a first mover, but on the other hand, it's also about return and investment, like how much effort are you putting into something and what is the return on this invested time? And for me, that was definitely not a good deal. And that's why this time I thought, no, it's, it's going to be in English. And also due to the fact that I wanted to address the European startup scene and also the European audience. So English it is. And let's talk about return investment, actually, because I think that's something that we, we never rolled out properly, but we got some figures from Spotify and so on. And we were actually pretty happy about it because when you start this, you have no idea what dimensions are going to be. But if you think about it, someone really committing to listening 40 to talking, minutes. Yes, yeah. for 40 minutes on such a specialized subject, such as business angeling. Female business angeling. Female business so angeling. Super niche. It's pretty niche, unfortunately, still. 
<laughs> but I'm really happy that we have three digits of people listening and listening regularly. You have like several thousands of people listening. So yeah. The top five European yeah. countries. So we have UK, Germany, Portugal. We have Netherlands. Yeah. And if you think about uh, yeah. it, if you had to fill a room full of people, that's a lot of people listening to you talking. That's like a small indie concert. Yeah. Even if they're folding their laundry. Or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They've listened and maybe they've taken one or two things. We're super happy. I think the most gratifying thing for me was people reaching out to me, people I know from my corporate career. They listened to it and they said, wow, this is super brave. It's like, well, why? It's just a passion project that I always wanted to do it. And Tina too. And it felt like a good combination. And they said, you know what? I'm thinking about starting to angel invest while... Why should I buy like a third designer bag? How could I start? Well, that's why we started this podcast. Yeah, so so, so cool. people start thinking about, I could maybe join a syndicate or I could just start thinking about this topic. Do I really need a fifth pair of expensive shoes? Or should I rather be supporting a female founder? And I think this is a real win too. Yeah, I have to interrupt you now because I'm thinking about quotes, how we can promote this episode on social. And I'll just see this quote in my head, trading a Louis Vuitton bag to an investment into a female founder, for example. I think this is brilliant. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Maybe swap it in for MS. There aren't that many like 5,000 euro plus Louis Vuitton bags. But maybe you or whatever, whatever is in. You know, we don't know the handbag market. <laughs> Me neither. I have no idea. <laughs> we, oh, we're all the wrong women to talk about <laughs> fancy <You're> bags. <laughs> So we had June Angelides from Zamos VC as one of our first guests. And she was telling that in Africa, there is actually like a handbag fund. So it's called like that. It's for women who <laughs> invest together in female founders in Africa instead of buying another handbag. So it's not our idea. For me, another thing that I really enjoyed was giving these female business angels a platform because it's such a brave thing to do and it's such a hard thing to do. And the first investment is the hardest. So we had a few on that hadn't done that many and to come and record something about what they're doing and why they're doing it is such a nice way to give them space like for a stage. Yeah, 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 for what them, they're yeah. doing. And and there's some people that we have grown so much in the last year, like Julia Duz. She's been so active this year. And she said, oh, my God, it was so cool to, to record this podcast. I was so frightened. It was so hard. <laughs> yeah, she was just starting. Now she has like 15 angel investments. I think for her, it was kind of an audio manifestation <laughs> of what you're planning on doing and, and, and why you do it. If you said that, you have to do it. And our mm. podcast has been like a document of the zeitgeist of this year. So Julia is one yeah. example. We had the Carmen Alonso who actually started her own fund, Cocor. We had her just before the launch. Then we had Deepali. She was still a super angel with Alma Angels and investing on behalf of Atomico. And a couple of months later, she became a general partner at Speed, Speed Invest. Invest yeah. And we, had, Gloria, and we had some really emotional the, episodes right, when yeah. the Ukraine conflict started. And Oh my God. I'm, I'm Russian and the day when Russia invaded Ukraine, I knew that the next day I have my first studio recording and I was on the one hand very excited, but on the other hand, I was a wreck emotional and mentally. So I caught an mm. Uber and I got into the car and I, I forbade myself to read the news that day before I record. So I'm in that mm. car and... Um, and music is playing and suddenly they start broadcasting the news and I hear that Russia is bombing Kiev and that missile rockets hit Kiev and I literally begin crying right in the car oh, and it is impossible. How can you continue doing whatever you're doing? It felt so unimportant. I'm recording an, a podcast, mm. but how is it important in the grand scheme of things when mm. such horrible events unfold? But then mm. I reflected on that and thought, yeah, but that shouldn't derail from all the good work that I'm putting into this. And you still have to focus on the positive things that you can deliver and continue work. We had our first live recording in Factory yeah. Kreuzberg Stephanie. with uh, Stephanie van Beer and Deborah mm. Uh, from Founderland. So it was around diversity and we planned it for International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So we flipped the conversation around the conflict and racial discrimination at the Ukrainian border. There are not only Ukrainians. Yeah, people of color had real trouble to get out. Also mm -hmm. what's shocking, some friends, a bunch of Ukrainian founders who moved to Berlin now, and they have a Syrian friend who moved from Syria to Kiev and was happily building startups in Kiev. And now she's 30 and she moved for the second time, escaping the conflict. 
And I'm not sure if we would have this conflict if women ruled the world, if, if it would be that brutal. Most probably not. And I think this is a good segue to discuss diversity in the startup scene, in the investment scene. On the one hand, we've seen a lot of great news this year. So we saw a lot of, well, not a lot of, but we saw some new funds that would focus on women-led businesses. We saw some women-led funds who do not necessarily have a gender lens, but they have female general partners. So on the one hand, I want to focus on these positive trends. On the other hand, I see that the volume of investment, the amount of money that goes into women-led startups is declining. It's shrinking. It's it's abysmal anyways. It's depressing. And it's getting even smaller and smaller. So why do you think this is happening? I wish I had an answer. That's all. Dang, I I, I hope for one (laughs) because I don't have an answer either. I think it will (laughs) take time. It's just going to take time. I think it's going to take time. I know that percentages of mixed teams founding are going up how it relates directly with, with average across the industry, I can't give you an answer. There are some suspicions I have, such as, especially in the beginning of the year, we had really, really inflated rounds, big companies, which are all the guys doing it. Is it an ego thing? Well, I don't know whether it's an ego oh. thing. It's a many egos, egoing together thing. Maybe. <laughs> egoing together. Um, <laughs> It's a communal ego effort. And no, I don't, no, I actually don't think it's ego. It's obviously something that's ego related, which is the belief in in really bigger visions for mania yeah? and, and the execution that's happening in some cases because of this. And this is what it's all built on. Yeah, Coming back to the numbers, it's a mixture of a focus on these really, really huge rounds that happened in the beginning of the year, which are all male led pretty much. And I don't really have another explanation because it goes down to the averages. I haven't seen any numbers, which I would love to see in the pre-seed seed area. But the split is there because this is what we would want to see. The because change. you have a general number and like right. female yeah. only teams yeah, is less than all, 2%. And these averages and are so, so distorted by the huge rounds because yeah. so much of it is the huge rounds. So it's just not still not very good data. Uh, so I, I can't give you a proper good answer, but that's my only suspicion that it's all skewed by these huge deals. And we've met in Paris at Women in the Sea conference. And the comforting thing is that there are a bunch of new funds that emerged this year. Also raising their proper fund. There is Pink Salt Ventures this in the sister, sister. Sister, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there are a couple of others, something in the Baltics as well. Better fund in the Baltics. Yeah. yeah. And these funds, this is something that we only learned this year while running the fund as well, is that we play now a very important role in the Berlin ecosystem as the first filter for female founders. And that is an important role. Yeah? Although... Disclaimer, this is only for venture capital kind of funding. Obviously, there's a lot of funding that's not venture capital, which is super valuable for economy. But this is just the hyper growth potential startups. But it is important that every ecosystem has someone like us that works day and night on this stuff. And now we have that in almost every European country, exactly. which is so a really good. Really that's cool. the first step. That yes. It's going to take years. And we're, we're seeing all the female juniors being hired into the funds, obviously not at partner level. It's so hard to hire partners at partner level. So it's so good that all the new funds are bringing women at the bottom and mid levels. So... It's just going to take time. There have been a couple of unicorns and almost none of them in Germany had a female founder. We need more female founders with a good exit also to get this flywheel going. And um, It takes time, but it's coming. Make this episode <laughs> in seven years again, yeah. in 10? No, in three. In, in three, three. In three. <laughs> yeah, let's stick to three. Sounds a bit yeah. more optimistic. What I found interesting in the female founders reports for Germany is that only 6% of female founders act as business angel investors and 16% of male founders. So there is this huge gap of 10 percentage points, Mm. which is significant because that means that the money does not circulate. The money doesn't flow back into the ecosystem. And that's, I think, where your podcast is extremely important because it, it sheds light on those female role models that do invest as angels and uh, it demystifies this whole path. And on the other hand, I'm also very curious to observe this whole wave of emerging fund managers and uh, people who pivot into the venture capital industry from other industries and not just make it more diverse from the standpoint of gender. They make it more diverse from the standpoint of experiences because up to 90% of investment professionals in venture capital, they have never worked anywhere else. They have just been in the venture capital industry, period. 
And if we can ride this way of emerging fund managers that bring a wealth of different experiences, that will automatically make also the startup ecosystem, the startups that are backed by investors also more diverse. That means that we're also creating different types of products and services that we are using the whole potential of the society, the creative potential of the society, the economic potential of the society. So Katya, what was your biggest learning out of all the conversations that we've had? I guess my biggest learning was that running a podcast on the side massively underestimated how much work it is, especially all the social media around it and promotion. And all. there is like an impressive tech stack for podcasters and creators compared to how it was a couple of years ago. It's still, still lots of work and it's very manual to run a podcast. It's not just audio. I have to thank Katya <laughs> because she did everything. I sometimes showed up and talked. No, not true. So this podcast would not exist here without in this order. So first uh, we had uh, our friend Neda Rajabi who did a um, headshot for 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 like for the very first episode and uh, she's actually she now uh, she's recently shooted for Vogue Germany. So she's oh done, my uh, god! She's done, like, for, so she's uh, yeah riding the wave of her photographic career <laughs> and yeah she's done like a photo reportage with Iranian women. Thank you, Neda. We also Johannes who has been like a brilliant or brilliant art director who came up with the artwork and visual identity which seems to be it is really important I think for the podcast actually and all the guests we have they loved their like artwork with little angel wings um what else and of course like Christian Bachmann who is our producer of this podcast uh, he gave us his music he helped us he edited the episodes he gave us advice people at ACAST so to Toby Tobias Gribanov um Paulus at uh Apple who runs podcast in Germany for Apple so everyone who was empowering us and hand-holding and everyone said oh you want to start a podcast we are with you so we will help you we will support you uh like hands-on and also kind of cheerleading and um, yeah, I think without all these people, it would uh, have not existed. So yeah, so thank you all. So and, Daria, um, what's your main yeah. insight about podcasting of the year? Uh, my main insight is that sometimes you underestimate what you're creating. So many people came to me and told me that they're absolutely fascinated with what I've been doing and with the footprint and the online presence, the reputation that I've created and all the great stories that I shared. From the inside, it looks, for me at least, it always looks much smaller than from the outside. Yeah, that's true. But that's the same also for knowledge often, huh? That exactly. You always like, oh, I don't know anything. And then when you speak to someone who doesn't know anything about the subject, you're like, oh, I should know. That. Would attribute this knowledge thing to an imposter syndrome sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's the way yeah, it manifests sure. itself. But here, it's really hard to judge sometimes and take social media. Sometimes I look at the numbers and and they're impressive. Sometimes I doubt, you know, are these numbers even true? Is it true that mm. people in Vanuatu listen to my podcast or people in, in Indonesia listen to my podcast? Because it sounds and looks surreal. But then mm. suddenly you get a tiny little piece of feedback or you have a random conversation and people share something that they heard on your show or they randomly tell you, oh, you know, actually that made an impact on my decision or that helped me in this another way. And you realize that these numbers, these numbers are true. It, you can't validate them immediately all the time, but uh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever mm -hmm. you're creating intangible can be tangible from time to time in, in a very, very concrete way. You are the creator and so you are becoming the opinion leader. So you have the mic and people actually listen to it. Maybe it's a bit scary, yeah. but then it's also nice to start a little movement, even if it's a very niche one. Yeah, as you rightly said, you have the mic. So for me, an open question and something that I'm still trying to understand, how much of me shall I share on my podcast? It's my podcast, right? But the idea of the podcast is to give space to other women. This is my goal, yeah. to shed light on their stories. But so many people tell me, no, we also want to hear you. And it's then a balance, how much me should be on the show, how little. Yeah, an interesting one would be, so how does this dialogue happen? Our dear listeners reach out on Instagram, on LinkedIn, 
or I, they ask for an intro and then they want to meet guests we had on our podcast or they want like some other introductions. It would be really nice to kind of grow a podcast into a community where it's not like one too many, where it's like all about you and your guests, but it's also about the community around your podcast and that they can talk to each other and have like, you know, productive, build productive relationships and fulfilling ones. This is true. And th this so, yeah, we started the Telegram group for that, mm. but uh, yeah, we need to kind of activate it a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's where the podcast will live on. Yeah. But what's the plan? Yeah. Yeah. So the plan is, so we, when we started this podcast, the plan was to interview 20 to 25 female business angels based in Europe during a year. And we hit the target. So it was a project for a year and we are very proud. I think it exceeded all the expectations. So it's been super fun. It took us to Vienna, to Female Founders Conference. It took us to Paris to like podcast on stage to we started to we met incredible women just people were referring them to us like you have you need to have like this woman on your podcast and yeah and the main learning is to just do things that follow your inner calling and even if it's just for one year yeah and for um, what's next we'll see don't know don't know for me it's time to You know, I'm a VC now, so it's it, it's been good to reflect for a year and a half on being an angel. And so um, for me, it's definitely time to move on onto the VC level. <laughs> um, and um, we'll see. I mean, we're such good friends. You never know what's going to happen. My plan is to focus on also on business and to hopefully start start another startup. Fingers crossed. Yeah, but let's let's um, collect some of the wisdom that the, we've collected yeah. during the podcast on business angeling. The biggest one <laughs> that finding your gang is really important in life, but finding my gang was a magical experience in a way, and it still remains one of the best things that's happened to me in my whole life, finding Giza and Fabiola. You um, have the whole family around Oxo now, so it's yes. not just you, yeah. you know, running the company. It's all this family and extended family and totally. community. And I mean, and you know, you're, you're in with a lot friends. of the friendships that have happened yeah. about the female business angeling community in Berlin, and it's lovely. It's such a cool gang, and people find each other and invest together. That's so important because I always say it's faster to make decisions. You make better decisions if you're not by yourself and you don't try to make the decision by yourself. So find your gang, whether it's a VC that you co-invest with, whether it's another business angel that you like to co-invest with, or maybe it's five co-investors, five business angels that you like to co-invest with. Find your <laughs> gang, find your gang. Um, and there are some really cool places to find your gang. So in, in Germany, it's Evangelistas or Encourage Ventures, which are doing also amazing work, Encourage Ventures. Then there's Alma Angels in the UK. Hermesa in the UK. Hermesa, you have Angel Academy. Angels for Women in Italy. They are pretty kick-ass. Femme Business Angels in France, Sister. There are like a bunch of organizations in the Nordics as well. And yeah, there are places to go. No, no one can say, oh, I don't know how to find my gang because there are places you can find your gang. And if you cannot find your gang, you can create it. Exactly. That's always my way. That is exactly how I launched my first podcast. Because I said, well, if there is nothing out there that I would like to listen to, maybe I should launch my own show. Bang. Maybe I should listen yeah. to my own voice. Yeah, that's Why what we've done. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> And get used to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's the main learning, like uh, find your gang. So join a business angel club or start one. There are like a bunch of Slack channels. So we will be sharing that on the Telegram group and also like on the, on the LinkedIn post. Then the second learning is just start by doing something, by helping founders. So share advice, share network, share expertise, write an article. So you don't have to invest money in a way. Just start by being helpful and yeah, by giving first. You, you, you can kind of test ride the experience. Of course, the money is a big part of it. But in a way, it's like once you've invested the money, you have to put the work in. Obviously, no one holds a gun to your head. You have to do your work, but you want to put the work in because it is work. It's a commitment to invest in founders. So that way you can like test drive the work without having to put the money down. And it also solves the issue of the pipeline. So many people have no idea how to even penetrate these mysterious world of startups. Where do I find them? Where are they hiding? Well, there are many places where they're hiding. Well, because they're not hiding in plain sight. And then if you join an accelerator, an incubator, or some kind of a community as a mentor, as an advisor, as a contributor, as a volunteer, whatever, you don't have to put yeah. your money first. You can first contribute with your knowledge, with your experience, and get a feel 
feel and get a taste. Is it something for me? Does this drive me at all? And is there a spot for me? Is there a spot market? for me? Is, is my expertise valuable? Because it may, be, no, exactly. it may be the case that you're coming from an industry and you will have to discover what is your USP? What is that they can offer to founders? Maybe you'll have to find specific types of founders. Maybe this will be not startups. Maybe this will be more classical enterprises that will benefit from your industry expertise. It's an exploration. It's a very interesting journey to explore what is your added value that you can deliver to entrepreneurs. You've already kind of come to our point three, <laughs> which is like define your USP. Some people spoke about this in a really amazing way. For example, Laura Lewandowski was awesome talking about what her USP is um, and how she thought about it and how she brings it into the companies that she invests in. It's really critical because otherwise you don't even know what to have the first conversation on. It makes everything so much easier when you know, oh, this is what I'm here for. Yeah, it's not, hi, my name is Tina and um, I'm really smart and I really would like to help you. It's like, I'm really cool. Uh, no, my name is Tina and here's like what I have. Here's yeah. my superpower. Yeah. I can here's crunch your Excel sheets. Yes, or I, here's yeah. my superpower. <laughs> Do you want it? Um, I think this is yeah. actually, and this is something that Kerstin Bock that uh, I recently recorded spoke about so nicely about how she, um, how she's her journey into this, and and she was really curious about deep tech funding and about um, uh, money f and the European Commission. So she started becoming a board member at the European Commission, and then she, um, and then and now she's investing in things that she came through. If you're driven by true curiosity and really um, a will to discover. Um, you will go into a cool path, yeah? And you have to, to, in order to make these decisions that you need to take to make angel investments, you have to dig really deep into subjects. And without your curiosity, that just ain't going to happen. It's also an amazing source of energy because it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? So if you invest into a startup, it means that you will be there with the startup for a few years. Maybe you will exit in two, three years. Maybe you will exit in five years. Or, or in 10. 10. Or maybe never. Yeah, and yeah. you can lose it all. Yeah, most well. likely never. Yeah, <laughs> But it means that you need some kind of source of energy that will keep you going. And curiosity is a very powerful driver. If you're curious about something, you are insatiable. It pushes you to go further and further and further. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you also have to be in the right moment of your life. So it has to be like a gap year or you need to have some headspace and time for that. So yes, that's yeah. also the learning. So you cannot juggle like five projects at once. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about yeah. money. What have we learned about so the money? Money, 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 money. Yeah, for money, money, money. Yeah. Demystifying, yeah. So you don't have to be rich to start angel investing. There are a bunch of scout programs, for you have example. You kind of rich. Kind of rich. Not Rockefeller type of rich, but kind of rich. A bit. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah. how rich do you have to be? How yeah. much do you have to well, invest? This well, you can, you can invest your own money. You can start with a handbag, as we... <laughs> that in the beginning. So we just have to define how much a handbag costs. That's the whole point of this conversation. <laughs> so I've seen few angel tickets under 5,000 euros. That's really small, yeah? but it's more of yeah. an exception, I would say. But if you have a good value add that's clearly defined, people will take that. And one common learning across everyone I've spoken to and I've asked this question is, did you put too much money in your first angel investment? Answer, yes. <laughs> and so people think like, oh, if I don't put 50, I'm just not taking seriously or that's not enough skin in the game. So it's just simply not true. Yeah, start with five. That's yeah, five, yeah. 10, 15, Test the water. Totally, totally. Exactly, it's, diversify. Yeah, yeah, you're on a journey. This yeah. is not your last one. Because, and this is another learning, you have to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Doing three angel investments is nothing. You have to be out to do, well, there's very different numbers on this, but the lowest common denominator is kind of aim for 15 mm -hmm. over a number of years. So this is how you should budget for it because you do need diversification. Just like with any yeah. type of investment, if you're putting all the eggs in one basket, then the probability exactly. to be unsuccessful is quite high. But the good news is you don't need to invest your own money. You could join scout programs. So we had a bunch of guests who are Atomico Angels. There are also VC funds such as Altitude, for example, co-founded by our friend Videsha Berkeley. If you invest a 5K ticket, they would supercharge it with additional 
hundred, I think. So they have this open angel program, which is just crazy. There are ways to become a scout, but first you have to follow your curiosity and provide added value. You can also join syndicates. So there is like Angel List, Odin, Bauban. So there are ways to start small. And maybe like the very last learning is find what drives you. Of course, it's curiosity, but then you want to make some change in this world longer term and being an angel investor or mentor or supporter of founders, you can start supporting the change you want to see. That was the big one. And that ties uh, in with your USP, that ties in with, are you brave enough to put your money if you're not really driven what you want to see in the world ain't going to happen. Whether it's the female founders, whether it's the diversity of the founders in it, whether it is the tech angle on it, whether it is the impact that it has in the world, you need to really fall in love and really want to see this become reality, whatever the people are pitching to you. Yeah, and you need to like the way they operate as well. Do you want to support that or are you in or are you out? <laughs> it's been a great year. Learned a lot yeah. and uh, very grateful for having all our wonderful guests. And uh, and we will hope that the Female Business Angels podcast uh, community will live on on Telegram and uh, female business angels can connect directly to female founders. Uh, we will probably like fusion it with Augsa community at some point. The verbal of energy that we're creating here is bound to last. <laughs> I think the one thing that keeps me going in all the work that I do regarding the subject is the amazing women that you meet and the energy and the willingness to change things, to give up a lot of your free time, which let's face it, we don't have. So... It's just this this energy and the dedication and the passion and the honesty that comes with it that we all can profit from, especially the founders that we invest in. It's such a cool driving force. And another thing, you are suddenly at eye level with people you would never think that you are at eye level with, be it executives from other companies. And it's such a lovely thing to come together with people in joint believe in companies and products. This is true. I tend to think when I talk to founders, for instance, I look at them at, as the architects of the future because they are building yeah. our future. That's it. Right? That's and this is amazing. And the vision that they have and the dedication and the commitment and the grit that they bring to this world is just outstanding. And it's contagious. Yeah. Once you talk to yes. these people, it fires you up. It, it always fires mm. me up. And when I look at these women, they also have amazing stories and quite cinematographic lives, to be honest. You talk to them and you're just impressed with everything they have done, places they have seen, world they've traveled, fascinating stories. And I think these are stories worth sharing if we're talking about podcasts. These are stories worth supporting, worth financing if we're talking about investment, because all yeah. this brings us closer to a different world. You're here. Yeah. And you're the master of your own world. So yeah, take your destiny in your own hands and do things. Go for it. You. Just go for it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Daria, so much. That's been, it was really cool to be interviewed, not to interview. We kind of took over at some point, but. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we Maybe tried, we should we do tried. it again. Yeah. Maybe invite us to your podcast. We'll come. <laughs> <laughs>